Hey, this is Lou. Welcome to Lower It Up Podcast, powered by Basel D Magazine. We'll be interviewing local creators who were in and around the clock for the crop over season and beyond. Join us on this journey as we go behind the scenes of what makes crop over crop over. Welcome to Lure's Up Podcast with Basil D. Magazine. So this evening on Lure Up, we're here with Richel from Twisted Entertainment. And Twisted Entertainment is the entity behind the very popular event Tipsy, which has now evolved into Tipsy Music Festival. So we'll be getting into all of that this evening. So welcome to the podcast, Richel. Thank you. So happy to be here again. <laughs> yes, this yes. This year, it's been a year, a year already long, since long, long, I was here last you? time. So very, very happy to be here. And of course, to talk about the Tipsy Music Festival. Yes. As you said, this is actually our 10-year anniversary for <laughs> Twisted Entertainment. Mm -hmm. So the first event we held would have been in 2013. It was an all-inclusive, probably 300 people. Yeah. As you said, I think the brand has definitely grown over the years, you can see the numbers we're doing now with the events. Yep. Of course, last year we would have had Burn a Boy. Yes. And very, very this big. year now we have the Tipsy Music Festival happening the 22nd and 23rd of July. So very soon. Very, very soon. But uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to make sure and get you in the studio so we could be able to discuss it and also hint, hint, do a giveaway as well too. But I really wanted to discuss it because I would have seen people on Twitter talking about the event and not understanding how both days work, mm -hmm. who was going to be on what day, all that type of stuff, who were the artists, who were the DJs, what they could expect really and truly from the Tipsy Music Festival. All right. So as I said, for the this year, for our 10-year anniversary, we wanted to do something a bit different. So the Tipsy Music Festival is basically a two-day event, of, co of course, showcasing some amazing artists and DJs mm -hmm. from Barbados and throughout the region. And basically how we structured it. Day two <laughs> is our all-white party, yes. which is what we're known for. And that's being held this year at the Botanical Gardens. Day one is our beach party, mm -hmm. which is what we originally used to have, the tipsy beach party. So we're kind of taking it back to that kind of fun vibe that's happening from 12 to 8 on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Sunday event is from 3 till 11 and what we did this year is that with a purchase of a day two event uh, ticket you were guaranteed access to the day one event so it was really complimentary it wasn't that you could purchase a day one ticket separately ah. so a lot of people i think didn't understand that at yeah, first they didn't at all, right at all. so basically you were paying your money for your one ticket and that guarantees your entry to day one, which is complimentary. Of course, if you don't want to attend day one, you don't have to. You right. can choose. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't want to. I don't know why exactly. <laughs> it's a free concert and you have a crop over. Why wouldn't you? Exactly. But, but basically, that ticket was access to both days. And the reason I'm saying was is because now that we're at tier three, mm -hmm. which is our tickets that are $175, those tickets are for Sunday only mm -hmm. so if you have an early bird ticket or a tier one or a tier two ticket you're definitely guaranteed access to both days but right now that we're at tier three unfortunately that's for sunday only but sunday is going to be amazing sunday is the event that is headlined by masha montano mm -hmm. and buju banton and so it's still going to be great yeah you can have a fantastic time i mean as you said it was a a complimentary event but you're really paying, you know, you really want to capture that big event with all the headliners like Marshall and Buju and those. You you really want to have that experience because as most people would have known, Marshall would have come for the Caribbean Airlines event and a lot of people missed that. So, and his performance at Imagine Weekend last year was absolutely spectacular. Yeah, and that's the one thing I have to say about Marshall. Like, for me, I don't get tired seeing him. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> he has such an extensive catalog. And I do remember I was at the Caribbean Airlines yeah. event because he announced that he was going to be at Tipsy yeah, there. Yeah, multiple times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 
I was there for that. And he was speaking about, you know, when he used to first used to come to Barbados and he would perform with Ross Ailey. And I think that weekend he may have Ross Yeah, he Ross had, Ali had the show. Yeah, he, he went he, he to that. that. That's true. Right. And it's like when you think back to, you know, and not that I don't want to age myself, <laughs> but <laughs> like I can just remember his music even growing up mm -hmm. and the songs that he had and he has such an extensive catalog and then the truth is when he comes to perform is always very dynamic high energy he has his full band he has his dancers like he really is a top class performer he always gives that energy and I think a lot of people would agree that you really don't get tired of seeing him. No, At least I don't. don't. You don't. I agree with you. You don't. Absolutely don't. Because he always delivers a performance. Like each and every time he's value for money. As Ali. So he's always a, a sure bet. As you said, he was here last year for Imagine mm -hmm. Weekend. And that was an amazing performance as well. Yeah. And on the Sunday, along with Masha, we do have Buja Banton. And mm -hmm. of course, he has not been here to perform in a few years. In he would have, time, what was that, 2019? 2019, yeah. It yeah, was 2019, 2019 he was here. Because I saw him again. I remember when he had that tour, yeah. Yeah. So I have so, missed Barbados, yeah. I went to the Barbados show, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, I'm just looking forward to see what he's going to bring. I'm pretty confident as well that he will also deliver and have a really good performance and response. And a lot of people are really excited to see him as well. Yes. <laughs> I Not that I was surprised, but it was refreshing to know that people were still so welcoming because, you know, he's not a soca artist, of yeah. course. But as you know as well, Tipsy has always been about diversity. <laughs> and so, yes, we're in crop over, but we still want to appreciate other genres other artists throughout the region and what's not so but a lot of people actually have said like oh my gosh they're looking forward to seeing him honestly yeah because i was surprised you, you, you <laughs> normally don't get the pairing of the two like marshall and buju where else would you really get that honestly and truly and i had considered flying down to trinidad and i believe it was april march because buju had a show down there my friends like, you coming out here you know i like really? that yeah but i was like but he was so good he was so good in guyana so i was like and then just as the same thing you mentioned with Marshall, I grew up on a lot of his music. So yeah. then it evokes that nostalgia. Most definitely. Yeah. So it's not, and it's not explicitly a reggae or dance or show. So you, as you say, you have the blending of the genres. Mm -hmm. The same way that you had at Tipsy last year, because it was blending the genres. There. It was. It definitely was. And so I'm really excited and really looking forward to see how that comes together. Mm -hmm. But I have a very good feeling about it and I'm confident. I mean... They're both well respected in their own right. So I can only imagine what they will bring to yeah. the table. And of course, throughout the weekend as well, in addition to those two major acts, we still have a lot of other artists that really still are amazing yeah. as well. I don't want to keep saying, oh, this, everybody's amazing, but yeah, they're really, they, they, they are, really no, are. They are, they are, honestly are. <laughs> because we have a Bungie Garland, we have Fayan Lyons, Skinny Fabulous. For Barbados, we have hyper sounds, and we will have more surprises in store as we mm -hmm. usually do. But you know, everybody is well respected and known, and they have very good music and a lot of hit songs that we know. Simple as that, yeah. Exactly. And Young Brother and Pimpin. Well, they're going to be at the beach party. Mm -hmm. We put sure, sure. okay. that out. And as I said, for the beach party, we want to really keep that party vibe. You know, with shows, it kind of can have a different feeling mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. But for the beach party, we want it to be full energy, fun. And it's in the day it's from 12 to 8. So it might be a little hot that yeah. first. <laughs> but so what were your fans? You know, what that's were your thing, fans? Yeah. And, and it's a beach party. So feel free to wear swimsuits or anything that you're happy and comfortable yeah. in. Because like the heat has been crazy. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, but I fully do expect that people will come out. They'll be looking to enjoy it. There's been a lot of buzz around the event. There's been a lot of hype around it. And and I'm glad that you came to us so that we could be able to explain or give a better idea to people what it is that's going on and, yes. and what it is that they can expect and what it is that they can look forward to. No, most definitely. Because as you said, we got a lot of questions early on, like, mm -hmm. oh, can I buy a ticket for day one? 
Can I, you know, people confirm it. Okay, I have my day two ticket. Does this get me in day one? And as I said, that does apply once you have up to a tier two ticket. If you ha- if you're now buying a tier three ticket, that's yeah, day two only. only day two, yeah. Right? But so it goes. And in addition to the tickets, we also will have our table section again mm-hmm. this year. So for day two, those packages are available now on ticketlinks.com. There are two options. Each table accommodates up to six people, but you have to purchase your ticket separately. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're purchasing your ticket, you get your friends together, you decide we want to get a table, get that on ticketlinks.com. And when you arrive at the event for the Sunday, we'll have your package ready. We're going to have our girls coming through the section, taking orders and everything throughout the night. And so that's for the table section on the Sunday. On the Saturday, we will also have tables available, but those are not available beforehand. When you arrive at the venue, if you purchase three bottles or more, you'll get a table so you know you don't have to go and put your drinks down on the floor or anything. <laughs> um, so you will get that table uh, complimentary with that purchase. So I think that, that works out. It should be fun. Yeah, it should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. And it's, it's sufficient to everybody too as well. Yeah. And of course, we do have a cabana yeah. package, which I know some people are like a little shocked by the price, I guess. But when you do the maths again, it it makes sense. Mm-hmm. We have a cabana package. Those are only available by direct messaging. So you'd have to direct uh, message the page or contact somebody on the team to arrange that. And those cabanas come with two balls of Hennessy, two balls of Johnny Walker Black, one ball of tequila, two balls of rum, two balls of vodka, two balls of wine, ball service, an exclusive entrance, luxury seating, And it includes eight complimentary tipsy tickets. But I want to be clear that even though it includes eight tickets, it doesn't mean that it's eight people in the cabana. Right. You could have as many people as you like. Yeah. But again, they would have had to purchase their ticket separately. And so those are also available uh, for purchase. Yeah. And that because the cabanas last year are actually very, very, very nice. Very nice. So (laughs) I do know that it was... Yeah. yeah, it was value for money. So, because yeah. you know, sometimes you get a cabana, it wouldn't be as nice. But yeah, there was yeah. complimentary service. It flew throughout the night. People had a good view. Mm-hmm. Everything was fantastic. Yeah. So, and you know, we are just, we try to, to continue improving and growing. And, you know, from, it's very interesting because obviously what the patron is seeing and what we on the, other side at promoting event is seeing, it's two different things, <laughs> yeah. you know, but we just try to make it as seamless as we possibly can and keep growing and improving the brand, to be honest. And in addition to that, I mean, we've been doing a lot of giveaways, a lot of promotions. When we first launched, we gave away 100 tickets. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I definitely remember that. Before anybody, you know, and the early adopters hopped on and got their tickets early. Exactly. Yeah. So if it's one thing, I think we always like to give back or try to in our own special way. And over the weekend, we had a mobile caravan as well, mm. where we went to different locations. We had ticket specials and sponsor giveaways. So that was really good as well. And We are going to have a special coming up for university students. So that will be UE, BCC, Ross, and SJPP. And those tickets will be $125, but that's for day two access only. And of course, you will have to provide or produce your student ID. But details on that will be posted on the page very soon, which is Twisted Barbados, of course. And... All the information about the events and what's not is available on there. And we always tell people, like, send us a message. We try to be as responsive Mm -hmm. as possible. You know, any questions you have, because we appreciate that, you know, we might know something, but it doesn't mean that everyone is receiving the information in the way way that we hope. So, you know, we're just really, really excited for this no, I think it's good. I like uh, just like what you said with that you give back in your own special ways and it's rare that you have an event that will have, I like that you called it a festival and you have two days and that one day is a give back so that you can't necessarily purchase your way into 
the first day is to give back that again you wouldn't get it with many other events most people wouldn't go their way in that type of way to have a separate event for people to say okay we'll include this as complimentary yeah and that you could come out you could have fun and we will try to make it an enjoyable experience a real party experience because some people like concerts some people like parties exactly so and you you know it it really can have a different vibe you know they're a lot of DJs we're going to be having as well. We have mm-hmm. DJ Puffy, Just J, Selecta Carry, Major Penny, Salt and Dawn, Surf Rat, and Hachi and Sis are going to be there as well. So, you know, something, as you said, some people like the partying, some people like the show, some people like the combination. Yeah. It's all what you what you like and what you make of it as well, you know? Yeah, that's really it. Um, that's what I think anyway. But... I think it's going to be a really fun weekend. I've, I've been saying, you know, I'm not telling telling anyone to take Monday off. But, <laughs> but I like that. You know, you, you're right. It, but it finishes a reasonable time. It does. And honestly, even the Saturday event, as I said, that's ending at like 8, 8 p.m. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're in Barbados. It right. might go it's to nine, but, <laughs> might go to 9. But it's it not. Fun. You can go home. You can get your rest and you can get ready for the next day which is starting at 3 p.m at the botanical gardens and get your all white of course because that is the all white party and as you know we were not all we didn't always do the all white theme but over the last few years yeah initially it was just normal oh and then we introduced the all white theme and that's really been a hit and it, it really brings such a nice a- aesthetic when you look back at the photos and when you get like the drone footage yeah. and everything it just looks amazing we sent a drone pilot this year too as well to cover right. it yeah so shout out to alec draham but yeah we we wanted to get yeah good coverage because just as you say there's a really nice um ambiance there's good aesthetics when people in the all way people really put a lot of effort into their fit so i would constantly over the last couple of weeks I see people saying, okay, I want my outfit to look like this. And they do a design. It might be crochet. It might be something else. It's like something coming down around where mm-hmm. something around Louis Vuitton and, and um, all white mesh. And I'd be like, y'all really? You're like People are going, going all, all out. out. Yeah. And then, you know, I always say, I love, everybody doesn't love to go all out. I think I've said the people who do. Mm-hmm. But it's like, just wear your white and come and enjoy yourself. Yeah. Whatever is your preference do that but we love to see we love to see what people are gonna wear and how they're gonna get creative because yeah okay you know it's all white the guys have some limited okay it's either gonna be a t-shirt a shirt with buttons or a short or whatever but the girls as well the ladies some might wear dresses some might wear pants whatever so it's just nice to see all of the it's all white but it's still diverse yes right very diverse you you think as you say that because it's all white, it'd be monochromatic and boring, but people put a lot of effort into it. Or they have like little pops of color, they do something different. It's very fun, it's very different. I like that it has stamped that type of identity on the event. And it has also given, is a theme that people look forward to because a lot of Barbadians, especially I saw in the pandemic, were saying, we don't have theme parties in Barbados, so wish we had more, blah, blah, blah. So they then hold on to these types of events so they could say, yes, I could do an all white outfit. How is it going to look? How am I going to blend in? But yet still stand out. How am I going to be different? Yeah, it's very, very, very fun that way. Yeah, and I see a lot of the stories now. It's like they know tipsy in July. They know and it, they're yep. bringing their all white. They make sure that they have the options there for everyone to purchase for yeah. sure. And in the giving back, I also want to say that we will have another competition coming up. We have some standees of like six foot tall of Marshall and of Buju and we've placed some different places and basically we're going to be having we will be having a competition asking people to you know take selfies or take videos with these when they find them yeah <laughs> and then they can win some tickets to tipsy as well I think last year when I came I would have mentioned to you that you know in the same giving back spirit we used to do that we used to do other charitable yeah, things yes, as you well did. Yes, I and I that. really hope uh well we're hoping that we can do that this year because with COVID and everything mm-hmm. We haven't been able to do the children's party that we do at Christmas and everything like that. But hopefully this year, you know, COVID is still around. I know sometimes we forget. Yes, that's your very <laughs> but, good point. But hopefully things are obviously way more open. So we can get back to doing those other things as well that 
it's all part of it for us, you yeah, know. Yeah, because still be safely done everything. And I'm I'm so glad you said like the Ministry of Health is gonna applaud it <laughs> because yeah. they constantly contact me. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, so, it's yeah. still a thing and we will still be having our sanitizer stations and everything. Okay, you will have that at the event. Okay, that's yes, good. That's we fantastic. Will, we will. So as I said, we're just trying to get everything ready and in place because I mean how long do we have to go? Just under two weeks? Yeah, just under two weeks. But I know people are looking forward to it. I know also, too, you probably get that last minute push from everybody, especially probably the day before. Up until the day of the event last year, people were messaging me, where could I get a ticket? And I'm like, you're insane. Hey, you're yeah. not, I'm at the event already. Like, what are you talking about? People are like, I want three, I want five. I'm like, this is not how it works. So I will use this time to encourage people that they should get their tickets at least now, even though you would have missed the cutoff for the first day and, and that getting access to the, the first party, day yeah, yeah, to the beach party, at least you could still come out and enjoy a fantastic concert. Exactly. And as I said, I mean, it's headlined by Marshall and Buju. Like, it's worth well, it. What more could you want, really, and truly? Exactly. And those tickets are available now on ticketlinks.com. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of ticket outlets across the island. I can just run through them quickly. Mm -hmm. We have King of Fades in Sheraton Mall and Ricketts Street. Soul Addiction in Broad Street, Favre Bless Boutique in Tudor Street, Intermix in Sky Mall and Intermix in Sheraton Mall, Yaffa in Robert Street, Supernova in Sheraton Mall, 11th Street Boutique in Dome Mall, Rubis Coverly, Day and Night The Walk, Grapevine Sunset Crest, Imart Lanterns and Imart The Walk, and Backyard Restaurant in Hastings. And remember, you can get those table packages for day two only on ticketlinks.com as well. And I have to say a big thank you to our ticket outlets because I know that the people go in there like crazy yeah. <laughs> buying these probably tickets. probably get a lot. Like last year, people were messaging me because they would say, where are the ticket outlets? Because they wanted the physical tickets. I think this is the last day when it was $100. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we think. And I think they ended up at Yaffa and Robert Street. I said, yeah, we got three. Like we, you know, we need two more and all that kind of nonsense <laughs> done last year. So... What is always shocking to me is like how you see the last minute people like in my mind. So I would know how many tickets we've sold, mm -hmm. but then it, two days and the day before the event, you're saying like, you know, people come in and looking for five, six, seven tickets. I'm like, how many people are in Barbados? Yes. <laughs> no, honestly, I see all the times you say, it, then we get, <laughs> I see on my Instagram, I see on my Twitter, people be like five, I want three, I want seven. Yeah. Like three four two days before the event the day before the event the day of the event morning of the event i wonder the if that's part of the, of the excitement like oh let me scramble and get my ticket yeah that's maybe, uh, maybe that's it <laughs> maybe to each his own but True. you know we don't we we always like to respect our venues in terms of the capacity so of mm. course most often when we reach a certain point we do sell out mm. um so as you said, I would highly recommend anyone that has not purchased the ticket as yet to do so now at the outlets that I mentioned or just go on ticketlinks.com. It's so easy. I know a lot of people don't like the online ticket some, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, but yeah. It's it's just you, there. You can sit down in your home. And you, gas is exactly, not cheap. Exactly. <laughs> you know? <laughs> to have to go into town or find a park and all that type of stuff. Yeah, it, it really is a lot more convenient. It's a lot more streamlined and it be a lot more easier and straightforward. Yeah, most definitely. And as the event nears, we will be posting a lot of information to the Instagram page, which is Twisted Barbados, as I mentioned. And we will have information about the parking, because I know a lot of people ask about the parking. Yeah, always, yeah. The parking situation, any other must-know facts. It is not a cooler party. Mm -hmm. We say we have to say that every year. I mean, we have never had... It has never been the tipsy all-white cooler party, but for some reason, I think because Bim Tipsy yeah, was a cooler party. Yeah, that's true, yes. Right. So for some reason, people say, was it a cooler party? No, it is not a cooler party. So please do not attempt to enter with a cooler but well, all of the information surrounding the event will be posted to the social media within the next two weeks, yeah. <laughs> basically a week and a half or whatever amount of time it is we have to go. And as I said, if there are any questions, just shoot us a message right, and we always will try to reply. Um, and of course, on our end, there are things we're fine tuning or what's not. So I don't know, you know, people might think, oh, I asked this question of an answer. We're, we're just yeah, fine-tuning. Yeah. We're fine-tuning. To make so, sure you have the proper answer for people and you don't 
and yes. the oxygen dentally misleading them. Exactly. Giving them a wrong answer, all that type of stuff. Yeah, I, I was saying something wrong, then I'll come back a couple of days later and say, oh, sure, I was wrong. No, exactly. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that you do respond to people and that the DMs are open for people to ask questions too, because sometimes people have questions mm-hmm. and they might write it in a comment, you miss it because the comment section is just moving or, exactly. or the like section is just moving. You don't see it, but... If you know you stop at a certain point in the DMs and you see a whole set, you could go back down to that point. Exactly. No, we definitely um, try. I mean, we try with the comments too, but as you said, yeah, we a, might miss, we might miss harder. some of them. Um, but yeah, I just can't believe time is so near. And when I mentioned BIM Tipsy, I said, you know, I forgot to talk about these other events we used to have, like, Remember when we used to have Rewind? Yes. Oh, my, oh gosh. my gosh. Yes. I mean, we haven't had that. I'm glad that you brought it out, not <laughs> me. So you... T- <laughs> no, that was that was a really and truly a spectacular event. Yeah. It was a lot of Maybe. fun at the end of Kaguma Day. It was. Maybe one day. But, you know, also, like, when we had the bank holiday that time, Rewind was Ready. really well attended. It was amazing. But I think sometimes it's that toss-up between whether people have the energy. And I know a lot of people have work the next right, day. Right, exactly. You know? So, yeah, we took a pause from that one. But, yeah, we most definitely we used to have Rewind on Kadumit Day and, of course, BIM Tipsy in November, um, which we have to see. We have exactly. to see what the year has in store. You know, we also have exported the brand. So we had Tipsy Miami mm-hmm. last year, and that featured Burner Boy as well. Um, we've, we have had Tipsy in Grenada and in Dominica, but... Not in recent years, but, you know, as I said, we're just growing, continuing to be appreciative for all the support we have. Because if it wasn't for the support of the patrons, we wouldn't have this growth. Exactly. You know, it's, it, well, we're not buying our own tickets. <laughs> you know? So we're just very appreciative, of course, for all the support that we receive. And even when we're doing these things that are a little different, you know, bringing Buju, yeah. last year having Burner Boy, but just... Feeling the support and the love from everyone, still wanting to come to the event, still very excited. And as I said, so we, we're looking to continue making that mark in some other countries as well, God willing. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see. But for now, it's all about the Tipsy Music Festival. And that is the two weeks or a week and a half. The countdown is definitely on July 22nd and 23rd. Can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think a lot of people are because then you get the 22nd and 23rd, the calendar is pretty much that. Those two days are practically booked out for tipsy. Like, there's no people don't want to schedule any events into that time slot because they know it will be a big draw. They know it will be a big turnout. They know it's a big, heavy hitting events and that they're too much. Why am I throwing a party if I want to go and see Bujou? It's like, it doesn't make any sense, you know, or I want to go and see Marshall. Why am I going to run a competing event? Yeah. So yeah, you might it, leave your own party. Exactly. <laughs> the promoters definitely will do that. So I'm looking forward very much to it. I can absolutely say that a lot of people are too as well, because there are a great number of um, artists on the lineup that people want to see. There are a great number of um, performances that people want to see. A great number of DJs that they want to see, and just the entire experience and the ambiance of Tipsy, yes. and, and just having that for crop over. You know, you would have done Burner Boy last year. You, it's not that you would get Buju as a staple at Crop Over. So it's like, this is something new. So I could get my Crop Over fix with Masha and I could still see Buju. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a fantastic time, I believe. I hope so. I really hope so. We're really putting in the work, the whole team. Like, obviously, yes, the promoting and everything. But as I said, the fine tuning, trying to make sure that the bar runs smoothly. Having our girls going through to get the orders for the table section and for the cabanas, you know, so now it's crunch time and we're very, very excited because when you put in the effort and you see this finished product and then when people enjoy it as well, you know, it's a nice feeling. Yes, of course, you appreciate the constructive criticism, but everybody wants to do their best and get that stamp of approval, you know, (laughs) get that stamp of approval. So We're really looking forward to it. And, you know, this is year 10 for the brand. So hopefully it'll be a a, really big year. It'll be a smash hit for year 10. Yes. What about, can you tell me about your sponsors too as well who've made this event possible? Yes. So right now we have Mount Gay, Johnny Walker, Hatch Linus, K2, 
KFC, Sunshine Snacks. I don't want to miss out anyone. Um, I might be missing a couple of people <laughs> because I don't know what with my list for this. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I can imagine it must be nearly exhaustive to really capture everybody. Yes. No, there are a lot, a lot of people. And, you know, even coming down to this final crunch time period, there's still people that are like, oh, they want to come on oh, board. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I, I have no, the same way we talked about people buying tickets late. Yeah. It would be the same thing with um, people saying, oh, Dipsy, real big boy, got to get on board. Like, how can I get my business involved? That type of stuff. No, most definitely. So, yeah, I hope I didn't um, miss out anyone too. Important. Important. <laughs> <laughs> but no as all I could say is we have a lot of support. Um, even... You know, the small businesses, the vendors that we're going to have, because people reach out, you know, we're going to have like the popcorn and we are going to have a food court as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even the 360 yeah, machine. The, the camera, and yeah. And stuff. So it's like so many moving parts, so many people involved. Um, and we're happy because then we can support, you know other businesses mm. as well and let them come on and, board and create really an entire ecosystem around the brand no exactly yes. I, I like the idea of the festival weekend um in kind of near the heart of crop over and it doesn't feel like burner boy was this was a concern that people had that they felt like burner boy might be too big and he might overshadow the festival but to me he dovetailed quite well and i believe that both masha and buju would dovetail quite well too as well and then you have um bungee and Fayan, you have um young brother so I, I believe that they all will work seamlessly within the festival and it will not stand out as i don't know a cut above the festival or, or like as this kind of spot that is takes away from crop over festival i believe yeah. that it works seamlessly throughout me too and i think last year when we were bringing burning boy you know we spoke about not like yes it's crop over but also mm. attracting you want to get people to barbados yeah and even just now mentioning all of the people that we work with. Yes, of course, people look at events and think, okay, they're promoters. But there's so many people involved. Mm -hmm. The security, the bartenders, the food providers, like even people going to buy their outfits from the stores. Yeah. People going to get their hair done, their lashes done, their nails done. Like the guys going to barbers. Yeah, like, absolutely. Every, like there's so many people that I think benefit from events not even just our event you know just a event because there's so many different moving parts that are required so it's really a lot of people benefit and yeah. that's good for the economy, economy the country as a whole yeah yeah that whole orange economy where so many people benefit i think is really quite ideal yeah. and that the festival then helps contribute to it so from not just a tourism standpoint but from a, a orange economy standpoint where so many people as you said um the sound guys the lighting guys uh, the setup guys, the security yep. guys, the the um, people dealing with the music, the DJs, um, the makeup artists, the get rentals, exactly, tables, all kind of things. So the, the people, the like entertainers, the bar, yeah, the <laughs> hostesses, yeah, yeah, the different promo girls, yeah, yeah all those so type of stuff. It, it really is, um, I think, a great a great thing to be honest. As I said, not just our event, but you know, events in general. But of course, we are just very excited and looking forward i want to say very tired but <laughs> very, very excited as well most importantly very 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 excited and looking forward to this two-day weekend i mean we would have had some weekends in the past oh i thought you were saying that we were gonna have a three-day weekend my, my, my no. <laughs> no, no, like, not wait, this year. Hey, right. <laughs> do you remember there was a year we had uh, a tipsy weekend where mm. it was a cruise yes, and then there was yes. a movie night and then there was a breakfast party and then it ended at yeah. harbor lakes i think it was that year i want to say that was in 2020 or 2021 yeah somewhere right around. and we had that same kind of it was it was not obviously on this level, mm -hmm. but we had that two days of oh, right. that events. framework of events, the different events that will appeal to different people. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean I think that came off pretty well back then too. So 
I mean, we were also operating in the confines of, of COVID, COVID and, and you know, yeah. limitations Limited on numbers, numbers yeah. and everything. Wow, when you stop and think back, yeah. we really have come a long way over the COVID last 10 years. Yeah, because yeah, that whole period was a just different, a very different time. But at least now we're back to a level of normalcy, and you know, now we could come out bigger and better. And yeah, that's I great. Agree. You, what about for November too as well? Will you guys be going back? Imagine weekend, will it be a BIM tipsy again? What should people keep in store? Well, we have to finalize, as you said last year, we would have partnered with Imagine. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. for Imagine Weekend with Elevate. Mm-hmm. And I think that weekend also was a really great weekend. That was a fantastic yeah, weekend was, without a shadow of a doubt. It was amazing. So without saying too much, um, <laughs> I think, you know, stay tuned. You can yeah. see what will be in store for November for sure. And yeah. it's nice to work with others in the industry as well, you know. It's and good to see the collaboration because people always think promoters at one of the neck and fighting. No, like, no, no. Cat and dog, you know, like how y'all they would say, oh, Dipsy and so on the hill fighting, you oh, know, that gosh. type of thing. <laughs> but I do like when everybody works in stream and the way it worked from last year. And then y'all went into Imagine Weekend and then it was working with others. And again, creating a whole ecosystem. Yeah. Creating these festival ideas that people can travel for so it's like it, let's say you don't get here for the last week of crop over for the last lap you could come in for a tipsy weekend you could come in for imagine weekend in november yeah it gives the options exactly there's yeah. a variety of options you now instead of just focusing on one period of time for crop over for any point in barbados no definitely and you know we've always come yes in the season but you know not in the, within those last two Mm-hmm. peak weekend well, i would call them the peak weekends mm-hmm. of of the of the festival uh we always have fallen a bit earlier mm-hmm. um and marketed ourselves as being like a not just crop over but like a summer yeah event mm-hmm. and now as you said it's tipsy music festival and that in itself has its own implications yes. you know because we're saying like look it's a music festival so Yes, of course, we respect, we love the soca, we love crop over, but here's a little diversity right. too, and not trying to take away, but just to add, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, I think it's, it's a fantastic festival to look forward to, two fantastic events, and that people definitely, definitely, absolutely will enjoy themselves, and that is without a shadow of a doubt. I think we've covered most of the ground, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add. Are you wanting to wrap up with uh, just to remind people? Get your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Get your tickets for sure. I mean, this is not one to be missed. And I'm not just saying that because even if I was not pushing this event and this weekend, I this would interest me. Yeah, I would want to be exactly. there. You know what I mean? So get your tickets for sure. If you have any questions, drop us a message on Twisted Barbados on Instagram. All of the information is on there. It's we have flyers about the outlets. We notify people when tickets are soon sold out. And again, I know people see that and say, "Okay, no, I'm gonna wait." Yeah, but no. yeah. People always say, "Oh man, they always got one or two left." But no, not no. the case. And then what I will add is that this is not the last tier of tickets either. Oh wow! See, I rose Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I definitely would recommend going and buying your ticket because when these tickets are gone, the price is going to go up and you do not, well, let me not say you don't want to Right, be, exactly. But, you know, <laughs> if you can get your if ticket you can get now, it cheaper, yeah. get it now is my suggestion. As I said, all of the information is on our Instagram page. All of the outlets are there. Look out for our specials and our competitions coming out and you can get a chance to win. We've been doing a lot of radio promotion as well. So if you check us out, turn on your radio yeah. here and there. Yeah. We've been doing giveaways there as well. So as I said, we've just been doing a lot of giveaways, yeah. a lot of giveaways. So either buy your ticket or try your luck and see if you can win one. But make sure that you're there for the Tipsy Music Festival, July 22nd and 23rd. Yeah, definitely look forward to it. So we look forward to 
really experiencing it. Yes. Everything that Tipsy has to offer. And I'm really excited and I hope to see you there. Yeah, you definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for Robbie for making all this happen. <laughs> of course, thanks Robbie. <laughs> This episode was recorded and produced by Wabi at Nameless Production. So guys, my child, I would nurture it. And if it ever go, I would cry for it. And if they had the war, I would die for it. And anywhere we go, I'm a fight for it.